Hey, what's up, everybody? It has been a fun few days in the Motor City. We have a draft that is in the books. We've been doing some videos on this, but now we would just want to take a minute and do an overview, a look at everything, right, Chris? And we've we've seen um, and we've talked about a lot about the first four picks, and then we did a video recapping the later round picks. But I just want to throw it to you for a second, Chris. What are some of your major takeaways when we are talking about the second draft Brad Holmes and this uh, management staff have done for the Detroit Lions? Yeah, so my first one is Brad Holmes is always going to surprise us. And yes. you mentioned this, that that's a good thing. If he's um, drafting chalk like what fans want or what, Mel yeah. Kuyper's mock is that's probably not going to be good. Um, really, you know, like their job, they live, eat, sleep, drink this. So they should yes. be able to identify things that we can't. One of those being that the best receiver in the draft is still sitting there. How can we possibly move up 20 spots to get him? 20. We'll watch this. We do it. And it's like, man, that is awesome. So that's the one he's always going to surprise us. Did it here. He'll do it next year. Love that. And another thing that I think that I love is from Brad Holmes, the, the minute he picks you all the way through the process with our coaching staff, everybody, the players are treated the best you could possibly be treated. And they should be. They're the it's ones become on a the classy field. environment. It truly it's has. Class, yeah. And it's like yeah. they're the ones on the field. They're the ones running, scoring, throwing, blocking. So it's not Patricia. Patricia was, you're going to do it my way or the highway. Brad Holmes and his press conference said what i love about these guys they're all different and i we want them to be different so they don't draft like oh this guy's got to be fit exactly what we want his personality yes i want you to be you be a ball player and make plays and guys just love that man that's what they want they want to come here so brad holmes message the minute he drafts you is be you go make plays and yes. it goes all the way through coaching staff, developmental, nutrition. It's like we want you to be comfortable and be the best you can be. And it's like, man, I just I think that's huge for our franchise. And that's what I really love right from the beginning. Well, before you even go to another one, I'm going to I'm yeah. going to interject in there because I completely agree. And I think it was watching one of the inside the dens. I want to say um, Glenn might have said it. Ben Johnson might have said it. But they both said, hey, in this organization, when you're drafted and you start playing here, we're all about you. We want you to be the best and most successful version of you that you can possibly be. And what they have realized is that what's best for the team is what's best for the individual player too. So yeah, if you exactly. can create the best football player out of that one person, guess what? They're going to help the team. Not how, and, and I get it. Team comes first. I think it's obvious that Dan Campbell is team first, but at the same time, it's not teams first. So you must change yourself to be part of the team. It's team comes first. So we are going to utilize you in the way that best benefits you and therefore us. I, exactly. So I wanted to say that too. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. and, it, and, it, and it's, it's like, man, when, when I'm treated well, I want to do well for the team yes. or, or for, whether it's your job or whatever you do. Like if you're getting yeah. treated well and they want you to be yourself and they really see the talents that you have, you're like, yeah, let me, let me use those. I, I really believe that. So that's, that's a definitely one. Then the last one that just really sticks out to me is we have two more first round picks next year. And so it's like, we just, it's, you know, the, the Stafford trade was huge for our franchise because we just needed something different. We needed this whole thing, this whole regime. So as you look big picture, it's like we've got two more first round picks next year. Brad Holmes knows what he's doing. He's getting mm -hmm. elite talent. So it's like, I just, for the first time in our lives, like, man, this, this is, I, I, it makes sense. What we're doing the top to bottom, Sheila hired these dudes that are like, yeah, we're all, you know, the whole thing is just trickling down. It's like, man, this is, this is great. And, and we talk about it, talk about it, but we get through a draft and we get to look back at what Brad Holmes did. You're like, all right, that he's doing it, man. I, Absolutely. I love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I got a couple of takeaways yep. as well. I told you I would after you talked about yours, but uh, I think, I think my two takeaways, um, at least the two that are coming to my mind right now are number one, Brad Holmes, Dan Campbell, and Sheila Hemp are not impatient. I think that's the biggest difference in a national football. We need to win now league. They got long-term contracts, mm -hmm. so they're here for a while. There's job stability and they're drafting like they're confident they're going to be here for a long time. 
If you are worried about your job and you feel like you need to win this year, you don't trade up 20 spots to draft a guy with a torn ACL. You <laughs> don't right. do it. And your team ends up suffering because of it. Uh, cross sports here, Detroit Pistons, Stan Van Gundy. He always got players, and I say always, and I think I can actually use that word because he wanted to win now because he was the coach and the GM, so he couldn't take one half, one hat off to put the other one on. He always had both hats on. And so when you look at these guys, they're like, no, we're going to coach our butts off. We're going to put the players in the best position to succeed, but we're not going to rush this thing to be we're not going to try and be like, no, we must make the playoffs in 2022. No, if we do great, but we're going to draft for now and the future. And that's what I think is massively important. And then if you want to, can you throw that graphic up yeah. or um, I'm going to let you do it. The other thing that sticks out to me in this, as we're going through these first three rounds, our first four picks, me and you, as we're watching it together with a lot of people that are going to be watching this video too, as we're live, Remember our reaction like when we went edge again at pick 46? In fact, every edge that went off the board, we're like, great, that's someone we don't want. We're not going to go for another edge. Then we take it. And we're just like, what's he doing? Like, wh what's he doing? And then all of a sudden, when you see the next five picks, safety, tight end, linebacker, mm -hmm. linebacker slash edge, cornerback, you're like, oh, I get what he's doing. He's taken those position groups, and I know I've talked about it on here before, and he's saying defensive line, offensive line, wide receiver, I want them to be fantastic. I'll keep the other ones okay for now. We can make those even better next year That's or right. in free agency or whatever it is. It's like we can get by on our linebackers. We can get by on our secondary right now. We can get by with our quarterback and running backs. But right now we are going to have elite positions, and we'll just continue to grow the other ones each year. It's a progression. And we have to remember it's year two. And that goes back to my first point, patience. They are being patient. We need to be patient as fans, patient as fans. We don't need to get into a place where it's like, if we don't win eight, nine games this year, we're upset. No, it's fine. If anything, it's even better because if we only win four or five games, that means golf was terrible. And we're now in position with our two draft picks to move up even better, to get an even better quarterback. So <laughs> it, like, it's, yeah. it's fine. It's a win-win situation. The only time it's not a win is if we go out and um, it looks like they're not well coached. And that was the exact opposite of last year because last year they looked well coached. They just look undermanned. And That's now right. we're not as, not as undermanned. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And, I love what you think about what you said about patience because you really look at it. Yes, this was Brad Holmes second draft, but sure. his overall off season, this is really his first off season. Cause you look, he comes in and he's like, geez, oh, yeah. you know, I don't know exactly, but and you, no cap room, by the way, no cap after room. the Stafford trade, nothing. You, you got no, last year. you got Galladay where you're like, uh, I'm going to let you walk. I mean, you, that. Yeah. You, you kind of suck. So I'm going to let you walk. And then you got, um, you know, the just all the people that we had to let go. I mean, oh, it was brutal. I mean, I, I don't know. Oh, there was a lot of dead money. Oh, my oh. gosh. I, so he just had last offseason was more of just uh, I got to get ready for this year. So this was almost like his first offseason. And then so to your point, patience, I think we're going to be patient. We're going to do we're doing this right. And it's like because the, the goal is sustainability. We want to just be right in the mix competitive year after year and yes we're gonna have some key injuries and we're gonna win seven games and it's like ah shoot but hey year after year we're competing yeah. for the division and and we got to remember too aaron Rodgers has one year maybe two maybe three i don't know how who knows with that guy but you know. <laughs> you, i mean it's gonna marry up nice where we're gonna be coming on all cylinders and he's yep. out and it's like packers without him get out of here yep. you know the, the division's wide open so it's just future's bright Future's bright. And I think too, the one knock going into the draft sometimes on Brad Holmes is that he doesn't have enough patience. Like he won't stand Pat and he will, people were all worried that he would trade up. Well, guess what? Everybody's on the trade back train, but you can only trade back if some people trade up. So it's not like one, this is a rarity. It's just as common as trading back because you have to do both. Yeah. I think the other side of it is he somehow showed me that he's more patient than I thought by trading up. And I know I said that earlier in the video, but when you trade up to get a guy who's hurt, that shows ultimate patience. So let's not have that knock on Holmes right now. The <laughs> Except here, my number three takeaway, you ready for it? Yep. 
this is, well, a GM and a staff that knows what they want. Have you ever seen a team in two years in a row that gets their picks to the podium faster oh. than the Detroit Lions? Every time it's like, boom, pick is in. Boom, pick is in. <laughs> I'm just like, dang, okay, yeah. calm down. You could at least see a trade offer if you wanted. Oh, uh, dude, it's it's just, <laughs> it. I don't know. I mean, trying not to be Lions slappies, but it, it just – I don't know how they'll pan out. I don't know what I haven't field, but all we know is what we saw last year was a well-coached team that played super hard. That didn't have talent enough talent yeah. because a, we didn't have talent, but B any talent that we did have was injured. So now it's like, well, all those guys are back. We've yeah. added a lot more talent than we've ever had. Um, and we're going to add more because we have two first round picks next year as well. And we got Brad Holmes and it's just like, I mean, I'm not trying to be a slappy. I'm just, it's like, I'm just looking at what I see here. It seems pretty good. Yeah, it seems like somehow in year two under Brad Holmes, we have more depth depth than we ever did under Quinn Trisha, oh. than we ever did under the Martin Mayhew era, yep. right? Like we, we look at these things, even when our team was decent and we were making the playoffs. Remember, we made the playoffs, got smoked by the Saints. Then we made the playoffs and got robbed against yep. the Cowboys. But when you go back and watch those games, look who's coming off the bench. It's not good. And mm -hmm. what you realize is the reason we're in those games was Stafford, Johnson, Sue, Fairley, right? Like it was just a few guys that were very, very good making up for the lack of depth that the team had overall. There were other good starters, but seriously, as soon as one starter goes down, you're like, that guy? <laughs> yeah. And, and that's, what, that's what we keep saying. You, you get a great rush and now all of a sudden um Anzalone is not looking as bad because he's he's able to he's covering his guy and, and yes. Aaron Rodgers is stepping I always use Aaron Rodgers I should use Kirk Cousins makes it more believable but yeah, now Kirk, yeah Kirk Cousins is stepping up and, us. yeah it's just we we just have been letting all I know all I know is for all of Quintricia and last year zero pass rush couldn't figure out how to get a pass rush. Quintricia's running like a three man, uh, you know, just like he can't. It's just like, no, you need ball players that can get yes. to the quarterback. Jeez. Make a play. Make a play. Make a so, play. Yeah. So there you go. That's a good. I think that's our overall view on it. Um, I don't know if it's a wrap for all of our draft coverage because I'm sure there's other things people want to hear about and we'll continue talking about it. But it has been, Chris, a fun few days hasn't it mm. like a fun last four or five days just watching what's happening and just thinking about the future and we're three months away um we're you know may june july and then august we're starting training camp let's go and we're on hard knocks it's right around oh, the oh. Oh. so i'm excited for it um i mean i, I am and uh, hey if you're excited to continue let us be your source for detroit lions news talk and all that good stuff hit that subscribe button below we'd really appreciate it and we will see you on the next one.